Okay, this is the determination of the disassociation constant of a weak acid. So you're going to determine the Ka of a weak acid. So we have an unknown weak acid here. I have all of my equipment um, already out. So I have the burette. This part we're going to um, just get prepared for our titrations. So we have to clean the burette, we have to fill the burette, um, get that ready to titrate, and then we will also um, get ready our samples. So those samples are gonna go in these flasks. Um, that's where we're gonna titrate into for part B, um, just to determine the actual concentration of our sodium hydroxide. Um, so I also have some things with the sodium hydroxide to help me get it into the um, burette. So we'll talk about that in a minute. I have the KHP, which is, um, Remember, it is not potassium hydrogen phosphorus, that's an abbreviation, but we're going to use a known amount of KHP to determine the concentration of our sodium hydroxide. That is for part B. And then in part C, when we know the concentration of our sodium hydroxide, we can determine the concentration of our um, weak acid. So that's actually for part D, those calculations. And part C is going to be making a um, graph of the amount of sodium hydroxide added um, graphed with the um, pH of our solution. So I have a pH meter here. We'll talk about how to use that in a few minutes, but this part again is just going to be the preparation for our titrations. Um, so we want to make sure that this is clean before we try to use First it. First thing that you would always need to do for your burette is clean it with distilled water. Um, so I have some distilled water over here. Remember, you don't want to pour anything over your head. So um, as you're watching, I'm going to have to like lower this off the table so that I can pour things in it uh, so it's not over my head. I also have my goggles on. So I'm just going to rinse everything out with the distilled water. So any parts of the um, burette that might still have stuff in it, we want to rinse that out with the um, distilled water. Um, make sure that your stopcock is closed before you put anything in it, or it's going to go all over the table or the floor, wherever you have your burette. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit in here. We're going to do this five times with about five to 10 milliliters of water. Once we do the water, you're going to do the same process with the sodium hydroxide or whatever you're titrating with. Um, so once I've done that, I'm going to take my burette, uh, I'm going to tilt it and rotate it around so that the water touches all parts of the burette so that we clean it. So notice that I'm doing it over a beaker, so if I pour a little bit out, it's okay. Um, this is going to go into the waste container later on. Also, with all those washes, make sure that you put it through the tip of the burette because stuff can get stuck in there as well. So we're just going to repeat that four more times with our distilled water. Then we'll repeat that process with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so our burette has been washed with the distilled water. Um, so now what is in our burette is some water residue. So if we have water in here, that could dilute our sodium hydroxide that we're trying to titrate with. Um, you're doing several different trials for this. You wanna make sure that all of the sodium hydroxide has the same concentration. Um, so we wanna rinse out any water that might be stuck in here. We're gonna do that um, by doing the washing with sodium hydroxide next. Um, so that's going to be a little different. We don't have a squirt bottle for the um, sodium hydroxide. Um, it's in this large brown bottle. Um, so a couple of things you want to remember. You, you should never pour anything above your head like this. So um, that's a good way to pour stuff directly into your face. Even if you are wearing goggles, um, it's a good way to pour stuff in your face. You also don't have a lot of control. If this bottle was really full, it's gonna be hard to pour from this, even if it wasn't above your head. Um, so instead of pouring directly from this brown bottle, I'm going to use a little beaker so that I don't use too much and so that I have a little bit more control of how fast I'm pouring um, the sodium hydroxide or whatever I'm using um, to titrate with. Uh, I also want to make sure that I use a funnel um, just because the burette is very small on the top. Um, if I'm not using a funnel, I could miss it and pour it all over the desk or the floor. Um, so I'm ready to fill this up. Again, 
I don't want to do this over my head, so I'm going to lower it off of the side of the table so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, another thing to make sure that you do is um, make sure the stopcock is closed. So stopcock is closed when the handle is perpendicular to the burette. Okay, parallel is open, perpendicular is closed. So I'm gonna actually lower this just a little bit more. So now I can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna use my waste container again so I still have it kind of sitting with me. And then instead of using this brown bottle to pour from, I'm gonna use this beaker. Um, so I don't waste a lot of my sodium hydroxide so I have control over what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna wash it just like I did with the water. So a little bit, about five milliliters, five to 10 milliliters. I'm going to rotate it and put it through the tip of the burette. I'm gonna do that process five times. Okay, so I have cleaned my burette five times with water and then five times with the sodium hydroxide. So now it is um, ready to be filled to titrate with. Um, so again, I'm gonna fill it the same way as I did before with my beaker and my funnel. And this time I'm gonna fill it um, close to the top, close to the zero mark. Um, but I'm not going to waste time and try to get it exactly at 0.00. .00. Uh, I'm just gonna try to get it close to zero and then we'll take the initial volume before we start any of our titrations. Remember that while you are titrating any individual trial, the sodium hydroxide in your burette has to be between the zero and the 50 mil, uh, milliliter marks. Um, so above zero up here, you don't know what that volume is. Down below 50, there's a little bit of the burette that you don't know what the volume is. So it's very, very important that you keep that sodium hydroxide while you are titrating between those marks. So you may have to fill it between each trial. Um, we won't have to fill it all the way up between each trial. These trials are not gonna take a whole 50 milliliters, um, but you do wanna make sure that you have, you probably have enough each time. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. You want to be careful to watch your funnel when you do this as well so that it doesn't overflow. If you pour your sodium hydroxide in your burette and it is above the zero mark, you can just drain a little out into the waste container so that it's somewhere between that zero mark and the 50 mark. But again, I would not try to fuss with it a lot to get it exactly at 0, 0.00. That's not worth your time. So I am pretty close to zero here. Um, before I put it back up on the table, so you always wanna put it back up on the table before you titrate, because you would not be able to titrate over here. That would not work. It's gonna end up in a spilled solution, broken glass, um, something like that. So before I put this back up on my tabletop, I'm going to use a piece of paper behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure my initial volume. Um, this is gonna be the initial volume for trial one of part B. 0 0.68, 0 0.68 milliliters is our initial volume for trial one um, of part B. Um, so now this burette is ready to titrate. We're gonna need some samples to titrate. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back up to the tabletop and then we will prepare the solutions to be titrated. Okay, so in your report sheet where it says bottle, we're not using a weighing bottle. Um, we're just gonna measure the flask directly. So at the balance, I'm going to zero my scale. Then I'm going to put on my first flask. Now we'll take that mass. That is 92.785, 92.786, 92.786 grams. So make sure that you report that into your um, report sheet and then we'll add the KHP to that. Um, so we're, we're looking for about 0.4 grams of the KHP. Um, so I'm looking for that number to go up about by about 0.4. Um, so we'll, we'll subtract the two masses to get the actual mass of your KHP. 
so our mass of the KHP plus the flask, remember the flask is going to be the bottle that's on the report sheet, is 93.208, 93.208. And while we are over here, we're just going to go ahead and get the masses of our flask two and three for trials two and three. So the second flask is 93.659 grams. The mass of our flask plus the KHP for trial two is 94.010 grams. And then I'll do it for our third flask, 85.162 grams. And then the flask plus the KHP for trial three, 85.517 so you can calculate the mass of the KHP that we use for each trial. Um, so you're going to take the mass of the flask plus the KHP minus the mass of just the flask. Um, so for these to be ready to titrate, we want to um, dissolve these KHP samples in water and then we're going to add the phenolphthalein indicator, about two drops, and then we'll be ready to titrate.